I'd like to introduce Gary Walters. Um, Gary works as a contractor for Compass Pools uh, retail business in Newcastle. Uh, Gary's a specialist um, pool technician. Uh, his, his specialty is, is water chemistry. Uh, Gary also has a, a, a job with a, a WA based equipment company called Pool Control and Pool Control specialise in providing a, a form of um, sanitising system that's very popular around the country servicing pool builders and the pool industry in general. Um, Gary's here to talk to us today about uh, his favourite subject. That's right Gary isn't it? That's right. So um, on the subject of um, um, chlorination or, or pool sanitation, um, for, for yeah, it's, it's my understanding that the majority of pools um, built today and, and sold today are uh, set up as salt water pools. Would you agree with that? That's right. Yeah, probably around the 80-90% mark, I suppose, would be using salt chlorination. Sure. And, I mean, that's obviously a very effective uh, and tried and true and tried and tested um, system. Uh, what would you say are uh, the, the main benefits of a salt water system compared to other forms of you know, sanitation? Uh, probably ease of use, you're not uh, lugging big drums of chemicals home, uh, fairly easy to look after, uh, as you said, a system that's been around a long while, tried and proven. Yeah, I actually think it's a, an Australian invention, isn't it, the uh, saltwater coronator? Um, I'm not sure on that, you've got me on that one. No, it, it is. I, I it is can, it? <laughs> yes, it is. It was um, developed by, um, or at least commercialised by a company called Monarch in Perth as well, um, quite a few years ago, taken over the world. So. Um, yeah, an interesting part, uh, part of the story with, with saltwater chlorination is that you know, not everyone realises, not every customer realises what they're getting when they, when they ask for a saltwater pool. What are they getting? Basically you're getting a, a chlorinated pool. Yes. Um, it's just an easier system of producing the chlorine without having to lug home drums of chlorine or a lot of uh, commercial chlorine or dry chlorine products contain other components that can cause a problem either with increases in hardness or high stabiliser levels. Yes. So with a salt chlorinated system you don't have those issues. I mean effectively the, the salt water, which, which is what you, you're aware of when you're swimming in the pool, um, the salt's there to uh, allow a chemical reaction to occur. Uh, inside the salt water chlorinated cell, if, if I understand it correctly. That's correct. And that's, and that's making chlorine. So that's making you know, the, the sanitising agent that's, 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 that's responsible for keeping, keeping your pool water clean that's and healthy. That's correct. You have a very low salt water residual in the pool. It's a very low level, nothing like seawater. Sure. Um, and you use the, the salt is used in a process of electrolysis to produce the chlorine from the, the chlorinator cell. Yes, okay. And it's a regenerative process, so the, the salt doesn't get used up in the process, it's returned to the pool at the end of the uh, process. I mean, one of the, I guess, the reasons that some, some customers, pool owners, future pool owners, uh, are worried about having a chlorine pool, and therefore they ask for a salt pool, is they, they have experiences in, in, you know, at the local public pool where you know, there can often be a really strong chlorine smell. You, you can, you know, it's quite obvious what, what product's being used in, in those commercial environments. Um, how, what, what, what would you say is essentially the difference between um, that situation in a commercial uh, pool uh, versus you know, how, how a salt water chlorinator works in, 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 a, in a residential pool? Um, there's probably not a lot of difference in the end product going into the pool. A lot of the time the problem with the smell you, you get in a lot of those pools is due to incorrect chlorination or right. insufficient chlorination. Okay. Um, it's not necessarily caused by the chlorine, it's caused by chloramines or the byproduct of the process. So, you, so you're not really smelling chlorine? No. Might, we might think we're no. smelling chlorine but we're, we're smelling a, a byproduct. That's that. right. It's, you, you're smelling the gases or the byproducts that come off the pool via the chlorination process. Sure. A, co a correctly chlorinated pool will have very little odour. You shouldn't be able to smell much chlorine at all or very low level. Um, a bit like chlorine that's in your tap water. If you can taste it, it's probably an incorrect level. Yes. So it brings you down to controlling the, the correct amount yes. or adding the correct amount of chlorine to the pool. Yes. And, and I think um, it's also fair to say that even though chlorine, saltwater pools are um, making chlorine, uh, are quite popular in both concrete and fiberglass pools. Um, you know, may, maybe again something you, you weren't aware of yourself, but it's, it's my understanding that you know a lot of the um, the early uh, um, increase in, in interest in, in the saltwater chlorinator um, went hand in glove with the um, with the popularity, the growing popularity of fiberglass pools. Gary, I said earlier that you work for a company called Pool Control in WA, uh, which which make a, a range of pool equipment, and one of that company's um, 
I guess, main uh, items is, is a, a, a salt water chlorinator. Um, but it's not, a, it's not your everyday salt water chlorinator, is it? Uh, no. So what, what can you say about um, that Pool product? Control's background is more in automated pool control equipment, mm -hmm. uh, initially starting with chemical control. Sure. That automated systems that dose the pool according to the chlorine demand. Um, we've sort of taken that one step further and incorporated it with a salt water chlorination system. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem with a lot of conventional salt water chlorinator systems is you turn the dial and it puts a set amount of chlorine in the pool every day. Yes. Uh, the pool's chlorine demand will change from day to day depending on whether it's a hot day, a rainy day, whether you've got 10 people swimming in the pool or no people swimming in the pool. Uh, the problem with a conventional salt chlorinator is you set the output and it will dose the same amount every day regardless of the usage in the pool. And that's what is commonly called an unregulated system. So um, it's not an automated system, it's regulated, but it's regulated by you adjusting the output on the okay. system. It's not so it's regulated by the demand on the pool. So it's manual versus automated. That's right. Yeah. Uh, we've taken that one step further and incorporated into a fully automated system, whereas the system, while it's running, tests the pool continuously and doses chlorine according to the demand on the pool. Right. So on a hot day with heavy use, you'll need more chlorine. The system will produce that via the salt chlorinator. Yes. And on a cloudy day or in the middle of the winter, your chlorine demand will be greatly reduced and the system will adjust to cope with that. And I guess that just makes the whole job of the, of the pool owner a lot easier. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, uh, the, the water's always at that right level. That's right, it's easier and a lot more accurate. Yes. So you've got better control of the water chemistry, it's safer for the pool users because you do have the correct amount of sanitizer in there to keep the water healthy. Sure. Uh, plus it also protects and extends the life of your pool shell and your pool equipment. So there's a lot of advantages in having and maintaining that correct chlorine level, uh, which is I think referred to as a residual, is it? That's right, yes, mm. definitely, as far as uh, extending the life of the equipment and also saving money. The, the better you can maintain your pool, the, the less chemicals, the, the cheaper or the less expensive it is to run in the long term. Sure, so uh, over the years, the, the, the saltwater chlorinator has become a, a dominant force in, in swimming pool sanitation. Uh, and then I guess in more recent years, uh, Companies like Pool Control have come along and, and worked out ways to automate the, the system so that you're, you know, you're, you're matching the, the, the chlorine needs to, to, to the, the pool needs. That's right. That's correct. Because it's affected by a couple of factors, isn't it? There's, there's a lot of the factors that affect the chlorine demand on the pool and, and as I said, it will change greatly from day to day. It's, mm -hmm. it's not something where you can really set a dial and hope for the best. Um, trouble with the conventional system is most of the time you're guessing at how much chlorine you need for the pool and probably 80% of the time you're, you're guessing wrong. You're either yeah. over-chlorinating or under-chlorinating. Yes. Uh, the automated system that we're using takes the guesswork out of that and the system does all that work for you. And um, some of the other recent trends are things like uh, energy efficient pumps and, and, and so these days, for the last few years at least, there's been a big push uh, for for pools to be to set up with energy efficient filter pumps and so forth and, and obviously that's about saving money running the pump at a lower speed um, that can cause problems though can't it I mean at the end of the day if if you're running a lower speed pump and you're running it potentially for more hours of the day if you don't have a automatic controller type system uh, you're, 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 you're having to manually uh, adjust uh, the, the output of the controller. That's right, if you're extending the run times, uh, your chlorinator, your conventional chlorinator is, is adding so much per hour regardless of yeah, so the, where the, you're running the so pool. The pump might be running slower with, our, with these energy efficient pumps, but the chlorine generator, the salt water generator, is still making the same amount of chlorine per hour. That That's it's right, yes, unless you physically yeah. turn the output down, it, it's still putting out the same amount of chlorine. So you can end up with issues of overchlorination in the pool, uh, bleaching of pool shells, equipment, sure. toys, clothing, all yeah. those sorts of things. And the other factor, I guess, is um, an increased use of pool covers or pool blankets, particularly during winter. Uh, our pools you know, generally not used in, in, in Australia in winter, and so in a lot of cases, a pool blanket is used to, to cover that over. Saltwater chlorinators will continue to make chlorine That's right. if, they, if they're not an automatic system. Yes, and you'll, you'll see this with a lot of covers will start to uh, bleach fairly quickly, go white, separate, flake away. 
usually a sign of overchlorination. Yes. Uh, again, with the automated system that we're using, it will account for that and automatically reduce the chlorine output so that you don't end up with overchlorination in a pool where you've put a cover on for winter. Yes. So it really is about making um, the job of the homeowner a lot easier, uh, protecting the equipment um, and, and reducing your overall costs. That's right. And, and as you said, prolonging the life, of, I mean, a pool's a fairly long-term investment, so you want to maximise the life and get the best value out of it. So by having an automated controller, that's going to greatly help so the pool owner. There's a second half to the automated controller that the pool control um, provide and that Compass Pools are, 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 a, are a principal user of. I know that we use your product uh, on all of our pools in Newcastle and I know a lot of our other dealers around the country also find it, it, it's a great product um, to include with it with our pools. Uh, the the other half is is the the dose is the is the pH control side, isn't it? That's right. pH control is very important to optimise the effectiveness of the chlorine. Mm -hmm. uh, as your pH changes, the effectiveness of the chlorine will either be reduced or enhanced. Uh, most times it will be reduced because as you add chlorine, you get a gradual pH rise. Yes. So unless you're controlling that pH in the pool, um, you can get to the point where you can have quite a high chlorine level, yes. but if your pH is also high as well, that chlorine isn't doing anything for you. Um, so again, automating the pH control to keep the pH neutral in the pool maximises the efficiency of the chlorine. Again, coming back to cost savings, uh, effective use of the pool, effective use of the chemicals. And as you said, that, that um, pH control, uh, that requires the, the addition of acid. Um, Acid is a regularly um, used um, part of the, the, the chemical treatment of a, of a, of a typical a swimming, swimming pool. pool. Yes. So this is really just taking one more thing away from the management of the, the homeowner, the pool owner, uh, or, or, the, the, or the service technician. That's right. And it, it's correctly, it's dosing a bit more regularly. You, your typical um, owner would probably only get their water checked maybe once a month. Yes. Um, if they're lucky, they might look at the pool once a week and add a bit of acid. but. With an automated system, it's adding the acid as required. So if you need it every second day, third day, fourth day, the system will automatically dose that. And that's all going to, again, just like the chlorine demand, that's going to be dependent on the environmental conditions. If it's been raining, if there's a lot of sun, if there's, if, if there's been a lot of use of the pool, a high bather load, that all those factors will affect both yes, yeah, chlorine um, and pH, won't they? Rain can be sure. uh, have a big effect on the pH of pool water. The chlorinate is predominantly probably the main thing that causes the pH change. Uh, chlorine naturally being fairly high pH. Yes. Uh, so in summer when you're adding a lot of chlorine, you, you're getting more pH or more potential for pH rise. Yes. So you need to add a, acid a bit more regularly than you would in winter. So again, the automated system takes care of that. Uh, a manual addition of acid isn't a very accurate way and, and I understand of controlling that, the pool. And I understand that the automated system that we're talking about here uh, it will actually result in less chemical usage, including less acid. You know, by, by these you know, regular you know, daily adjustments. That's uh, right, you're keeping a more constant controlled level in the pool, both sure. on your chlorine and your pH. Yes. So again, with water chemistry all being linked together, the more stable your pH can be, the less additional chemicals you need to add. If you're getting massive rises and troughs in control of chlorine and pH, um, you'll have more trouble maintaining the pool and, and it'll count in more additional chemicals needed, needing to be added to, to control it. So it, it really does look after the two main factors in, in, in having a good uh, quality, healthy uh, water environment. I mean, it's looking after the sanitizer, the chlorine and it's looking after the, 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 the acid side of things which controls pH. That's correct. They're, they're the two things that rapidly change in the pool from day to day or even hour to hour. So an automated system is the best way of controlling those. Uh, manual test once a week really isn't sufficient to try and control a pool and adjust chlorine and pH levels with a conventional system. There's still a little bit of uh, input required from either the, the pool owner or, or, or the, the, the pool service technician. Yes, yeah, there's a couple of other factors that, that will change gradually over time, uh, like your salt levels, stabiliser levels and so on. Um, these are mainly affected by dilution of the pool water through rain and they're a long term change, they're sure. not a day to day change. So if the pool owner keeps an eye on these once a week or, or they have a pool service guy come once a month, 
they can certainly keep an eye on those other factors. Sure. That pH and chlorine are the main two factors that we, we're interested in controlling so, automatically. So, so obviously there's still a requirement to get the water tested at the local pool shop? Yes. Maybe every what month or so? Yes, definitely. A month's probably a good, a good time it's to... Particularly uh, during summer? Yes. Yep. De definitely during summer and they can keep an eye on any other issues that, that may occur. It's a bit like checking the oil in your car. Sure. Just keep an eye on it. Don't wait for the red, any red lights to come on and you'll have a lot less problems. So saltwater, gender, saltwater chlorinators are, 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 are a massive um, factor in you know, today's um, management of swimming pools and you would obviously highly recommend that uh, that the automated version of those systems um, with the pH control uh, is, is, is the way for, for all customers to go. The reliability of saltwater chlorinase these days is, is far and above what it would have been say 10 or 20 years ago. They're very energy efficient, um, very long lifespans, very effective and digital control in most of them now so they're, they're a very effective system. Yes. Combining with the automation in uh, controlling pool sanitation. And um, if I you know, can just throw this little bit in at the end, um, we've worked closely as in Compass, Compass Pools has worked closely uh, with Pill Control and it, I think it's fair to say that you know, there's a system that we, that we make available to our dealer network and our customers um, which we call the Gemini Twin System and there, there's, there's, a, there's a degree of exclusivity in that arrangement isn't there? That's right and it's exclusively set up for Compass um, with the correct parameters for running Compass Pools. And we've had those systems now running on, on hundreds of customers' pools yes. for, for a number of years. Uh, we tend to run them, those systems obviously in all of our display pools. So uh, it's been through the, it's been put through the, through the definitely, and through um, the ropes. We've made a couple of little modifications here or there to suit requirements of Compass. So it's it's really the per perfect system to add on a, a Compass pool. Yeah, we, we appreciate all your efforts. I, I, um, I, know, I know you've got a day job and, and, you, and you work with us on the side, but um, uh, it's been a good collaboration, so I, I, I thank you for that and thanks for um, um, having thanks a chat Andy. with me today.